Yeah, uh, good morning and welcome to yet another online tutorial on microwaves and antennas. Right. So we are in module 3 and we are discussing about antennas now. Right. So in uh, first session of module 3, I discussed, we discussed about uh, the basic radiation mechanism, different types of antenna. I just sort of tried to give you a big, big picture. Right. Then in second class, I just wanted you to be comfortable with the entire thing, radiation pattern, radiation. Why? Because the entire module, the remaining part of this module is based on this particular radiation pattern only. Right. Finding various space parameters related to this radiation pattern, like half hour beam width, personal beam width, resolution, beam area. Right. All those steps are um, based on uh, this particular radiation pattern only. So I just wanted you people to be comfortable. So in last class, what we have seen is I just tried to give you what actually is a radiation pattern. We have seen if you have an antenna and you have to find the radiation pattern, ideally what you should do is you should define a origin, right, and a spherical coordinate system and you should keep your antenna at the origin of that spherical coordinate system, right. And at some given distance, right, or over a um, hypothetical sphere, right, at each and every point, you should um, walk around with uh, some measuring tool, which can measure either field intensity or power, right. And uh, you should note down for each theta comma phi value. For, for instance, a sphere is actually what a, uh, the locus, or if you join locus of all the of, join all the points which is equidistant from origin, that will give you a sphere, right. And on that sphere, R is a constant. So when you move around the sphere, theta and phi are changing. Now for all values of theta and phi, if you note down, if it, either field intensity or power, right. Some, I, okay, I'll mute Sauhar, right. Uh, okay, yeah. So either field intensity or power, right. That if you can represent in a um, graphical way, that is actually field pattern. So it's actually what? Uh, field intensity or power as a function of theta and phi. So uh, we'll just what we'll do is we'll just have a quick recap and for, from there we'll move on to actually what uh, our serious business. Further we'll continue with our discussion. Right. So uh, radiation pattern. Right. So this is a typical radiation pattern. You can uh, see this is a, this is how it's, it's, it's you can see it's a 3D quantity. Right. And it can either be a field pattern or power pattern. If you plot electric field intensity as a function of theta and phi that will be field pattern right and if you plot power or power density as a function of theta and phi that is actually what power pattern right so i'm not talking about magnetic field intensity why right? because if you know the electric field intensity right once you know the electric field intensity from that easily you can find out magnetic field intensity x actually what e by z naught or e by eta naught right uh, where the Z0 is actually what intrinsic impedance of free space, right? Intrinsic impedance of free space, right? And uh, anyone remember what is the value of this intrinsic impedance of free space? You might have studied it in electromagnetics. That is actually what 120 pi or 377, approximately 377 ohm, right? 120 pi ohms or 377 ohms. So if you know electric field intensity, it's all about actually what dividing it with z naught to get magnetic field energy so either when we say field pattern we we'll bother only about electric field vector right you won't discuss about magnetic field vector right but uh, knowing electric field intensity is as good as knowing magnetic field intensity given intrinsic impedance is known and um, most of wave propagation it happens in free space or air so we don't have to consider about any other material right so that's it so uh, it can either be a field pattern or power pattern so what actually is this? It's actually what variation of field or power as a function of theta and phi, right? So uh, from this from this figure, what we can make out, we can see the, if antenna is kept at origin, this antenna is radiating maximum towards the positive z-axis, right? Or theta equal to zero, right? The antenna is radiating maximum. So as theta changes, you can see actually what radiation decreases, and for some value of theta, there are actually what for instance, in this particular direction, this antenna is not radiating. And in this direction, antenna is not radiating. In this direction, it is not radiating. And But in some other direction, you can see, for the, for in this direction, antenna is radiating, but very slightly. right? So this idea is what you will get from radiation pattern. So this is actually what field intensity 
right field intensity right as a function of theta and pi right field intensity as a function of theta and pi right so it's it's a it's actually what it's a 3 3d polar plot right and this pattern radius pattern radius means at any given point right at any in any given direction if you want to know what is the field strength or power what you should do so you should select a point in that particular direction on the uh, pattern and then if you draw a a radial vector that from origin to that point right that is actually called pattern radius and that pattern radius right that is the uh, distance from origin to any point on the pattern right that will be proportional to field in the case of a field pattern or power in the case of a power pattern right so in this particular case it's a field pattern right power pattern if you want power actually what power will be proportional to square of field right power will be proportional to square of field so if right from this you can actually get power pattern so later on i'll discuss in detail what is power pattern right so but for instance what you should keep in mind is this is a, a 3d quantity and you can see the direction of maximum radiation is along positive z in this particular example right and this you can see a main that beam through which we have actually what maximum power is radiated so that is called actually what main law right that that is called actually what main law right this is main law and all other lobes are called actually what minor lobes right this minor lobe can include side lobes or back lobes side lobes means the lobes which are actually what directed towards the side and back lobe is actually what towards the back side that's it right so and you can see there are some uh, in some direction there is no radiation and right? in some direction there is no radiation such for, uh, directions are called nulls nulls we have i think already discussed that so we have main beam or main lobe minor lobes minor lobe can include side lobe or back lobe right and nulls right so this is a, i don't know for which antenna uh, this uh, pattern can be it can be some actually what um, right a, some arbitrary antenna so this is a typical example of radiation pattern right typical example of radiation pattern so from this i want you to appreciate this is a field pattern it has a main lobe right there are some points of nulls there are minor lobes how actually we got this we got this by actually what measuring the field intensity or power in all possible directions all possible co theta comma phi and we have represented it as a 3d function right that is this right and um, one more thing this pattern actually what it is measured in far field later on i will tell you antenna field zones can be uh, sub, um, divided into two one is near field and far field in near field it is actually what inductive field and we can't tell in which direction electric or magnetic field is correctly oriented right but in far field we can assume the uh, free space wave is transverse electromagnetic right in far field we can assume the free space wave is transverse electromagnetic right transverse electromagnetic means right i'll just if um say electric field is in this particular direction right at, along say along theta right electric field is along theta direction and if magnetic field is along phi direction right and the direction of propagation of wave will be along r right direction of propagation will be along r direction so electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they are in turn perpendicular to actually what r Uh, direction of propagation so in far field right we can assume the field is actually what transverse electromagnetic right uh, the uh, wave is transverse electromagnetic based on that this is actually what far field pattern for near field it's not that easy to plot a pattern like this why because it's very um like um it's it's it, it doesn't have a, a proper orientation of field vectors right so um that's what so and um so you know this if it is a field intensity electric field intensity is a vector right electric field intensity is a vector so it has some magnitude that magnitude can be real or complex or whatever right and also uh, it has some direction right it has a magnitude it can be real or complex right which means it can have a um, magnitude and a phase right so this magnitude can be real or complex and it has a direction so if you want to plot the radiation pattern to completely specify radiation pattern with respect to 
field intensity and polarization what is polarization for instance just know that polarization is nothing but what orientation of electric field vector right orientation of electric field vector for instance right if you uh, use a a line type antenna thin wire antenna right and the electric field produced by this antenna will be vertically aligned right it, it will either vertically upward or downward right so and if you pose the same thing horizontally the field will be horizontal electric field will be horizontal so polarization is actually what orientation of electric field vector right so in order to completely specify radiation pattern with respect to field intensity and polarization we require the three quantities or three patterns right so if this is electric field vector right and i i we are assuming power is propagating in r direction right so electric field vector will be in some orientation right so if this is electric field vector i can resolve it into actually what theta component and phi component it will have a theta component right so this is along a theta direction so i can resolve it into theta component and phi component right so i should know theta component of electric field as a function of theta and phi right and phi component of electric field as a function of theta and phi so it 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 will give me the um, about the like uh, electric field vector right and also it will give me the idea about electric magnitude and direction of electric field vector and also i should know the phases of the field right phase is also important so maybe in next module i'll discuss in detail about what what exactly is the phase and all but for the time being just keep in mind right apart from theta component and phi component as a function of theta and phi i need the phase pattern as well so phase is actually what this is a phase of theta component delta theta of theta comma phi and delta phi of theta comma phi so if i want to completely know i i need actually what the magnitude pattern as well as the phase pattern so but for instance we won't discuss anything about the phase patterns but keep in mind to completely specify these three are required so if you are asked to write a short note on radiation pattern like right, you should draw a diagram like this you should tell it's a 3d quantity it gives variation of power or uh, e as a function of theta and phi right pattern radius is proportional to that and to completely specify these things are required all those stuffs you have to write right and you can see this radiation pattern itself is a 3d quantity so when we are dealing with pen and paper right it's not that easy for us to what deal with 3d quantity it's not that uh, friendly right so what we can do is instead of dealing with this 3d quantity right to represent this i can uh, take two cuts or cross sections of this field that is what normally we'll do in further discussions right we won't be dealing with this 3d pattern right we'll be considering with two uh, dealing with two cross sections i told in last class we can take two cross section one right uh, one along the a plane in which antenna lies right and one perpendicular to the plane in which antenna lies right so that again we discussed in last class but i am just summarizing it so that right uh, you you will those things will be registered so this 3d pattern what i can do is i can convert it into 2d patterns or this 3d pattern can be completely described using 2d patterns right if if you take actually what two principal plane cuts right principal planes are one along the plane in which antenna is present and one perpendicular to that plane right so in this case <laughs> in this case <coughs> sorry <coughs> antenna is kept along z axis so if you take say xz plane right xz plane or if you take uh, so, uh, yz plane right those can be actually what the cut along the plane in which antenna is present right but if you take if you cut along xz xy plane that is a plane which is perpendicular to the antenna so those two cuts right either xz and xy or yz and xy those two cross sections if you take that can completely describe the 3d pattern in terms of 2d pattern right but in some cases you can see the, in this case this radiation pattern is symmetric about beam angle right main 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 beam angle you can tell the radiation pattern is symmetric about z axis or radiation pattern is symmetric when with respect to phi 
right so in this case we want only one cut right that one cut itself can explain it completely right that one cut itself can explain it completely so that's what i am going to discuss next right so um so that, that as a note i have written if pattern is symmetric about main lobe axis only one cut is sufficient right so a typical example is the one pattern which i have given here it is symmetric about the main lobe axis so only one cut is sufficient to describe but if it is not symmetric about the main lobe axis we need two cuts right one along the antenna plane so normally we call it actually what e plane cut i told it in last class right one along the antenna plane that is called e plane cut and second perpendicular to the antenna plane that is called x plane cut right two cuts are required so a typical example is actually what dipole we have seen right i I'll, i'll show it once again right so um if pattern is symmetric about main lobe axis only one cut is sufficient for so that a typical example as i told us actually what this field this field is symmetric about main lobe axis so we need only one cut either you cut along this plane that is x set plane or you cut along actually what this y z plane both will give you same cross section right as it is symmetric both will give you same cross section right and the uh, pattern will be actually what figure of re revolution of this with respect to the beam axis right so pattern will figure of revolution with respect to beam axis right so um, in this case this is the cross section right this is the cut so this is a field pattern and this is the principal cut only one cut can actually what explain this is a field pattern right and you can see the maximum value is normalized to one so this is a normalized field pattern so i'll tell what is normalized pattern right if a field pattern right that is if it is e theta of theta comma phi if you divide it with maximum value of this right that is actually what called normalized pattern for example right you consider um, the marks scored by individual students in a class right it can range from say if if the exam was out of 10 it can range from 10 to 0 right the maximum score can be 10 so when i am normalizing it what i'll do if i divide all the marks with the topmost mark right so the, if the maximum score is 9 right if i divide it with 9 what i'll get the maximum will become 1 and remaining uh, quantities will become some quantity between 1 and 0 right it's it's actually what normalizing so this is a normalized field pattern right so the field pattern the each and every field point value is divided with the maximum value so that the maximum is actually what 1 and you can see in this particular case the maximum is along theta equal to 0 degree right and uh, right and that is equal to 1 and like uh, how we define bandwidth right for a filter or anything how did we define bandwidth right if you plot frequency versus gain or frequency versus power graph right and if it is something like this right uh, it's uh, this this is p max right p max and we we'll find the half power point p max by 2 if it is right p max by 2 and the corresponding frequency separation is actually what bandwidth right similarly here we can define uh beam width half power beam width half power beam width is nothing but what the angular separation between half power point so in this particular case this is, this point is maximum as i increase theta in either direction you can see the field will reduce at this point field becomes actually what the value corresponding to half power that is e max by root 2 right e max by root 2 if it is power it is p by 2 right if it is voltage it is v by root 2 i hope you remember why because power is proportional to voltage square or proportional to electric field intensity square so this is a field intensity plot in that if you have to find the half power point you should identify the points corresponding to 1 by root 2 right on either side right this is the points corresponding to 1 by root 2 and the angular separation 1 by root 2 is actually what 0.707 right so if it is a normalized pattern maximum will be 1 1 by root 2 point will be 0.707 
if it is not normalized pattern if e max is the maximum value 1 by root 2 of e max that will give you half power points right so this angular separation is called half power beam width so that is the next point which i wanted to teach you half power beam width right so in exam they used to ask that it's nothing but what angular separation between half power points so if it is field intensity it is actually what angular separation um between e max by root 2 points and this is the this is the corresponding power pattern for same field pattern this is the corresponding power pattern so power maximum is 1 and p by 2 half half power point right if it is power pattern it's a half power point so this angular separation is half power beam width so if, if you are measuring half power beam width from a field pattern or power pattern it will be same in both the cases in this for this particular antenna the half power beam width is 40 degree as per this so this will be 20 degree and this will be 20 degree so 20 plus 20 40 degree right that is actually half power beam width is it clear any doubt about half power beam width if it is power pattern it will be like this normal uh, you should find half point right so that is half power beam width and similarly we have first null beam width right half power beam width we will represent it as hp bw that is the angular separation between half power points you should specify if it is field intensity plot it is emax by root 2 and if it is power port p by 2 and if it is in db power in db how to write power in db p in db it is 10 log to the base 10 of normal power right over 1 actually normal power so if it is in db it is actually what minus 3 db corresponding to minus 3 db right maximum will be 1 that is corresponding to 0 db right and uh, the separation between minus 3 db points right so that is actually the field pattern right and a half power beam width and what will be first null beam width can anyone guess what will be first null beam width first null beam width right can anyone tell me what will be first null beam width please you can type in you can take guess not a problem first null beam width please do type in all of you are here or gayab sauhad are you there sauhad can you please unmute yes sir yeah what can be personal beam width before that did you understand what is half power beam width sauhar yes sauhar did you understand what is radiation pattern of an antenna yes sir yes sir right so now what is did you understand what are the principal cuts e e one section can describe that that aspect did you understand uh, not so much uh, again I, i should go through the letter again you should go through right yes, okay right so what will be half power beam width so what actually is this radiation pattern okay let me see what's your idea about radiation pattern will it tell you in which directions an antenna radiate so hard i hope you are not busy with something else so uh, spherical coordinates sir spherical coordinate and uh, okay i'll i maybe i think i should be asking some questions right um now namita uh, can you please unmute namita pratik i'll mark absent if you are not unmuting i'll be marking absent yes sir right yes sir 
yeah um namita tell me what did you understand what what actually is a radiation pattern in in simple words whatever you understood you can tell no answer if you don't answer also i'll mark absent right this is not going to work right why should i waste time here i instead of that i can just record and post it right if you are attending class right you should attend it seriously right try to learn something from here if you don't understand ask doubts right simply uh, by joining the meet and leaving the place it won't work and th that is not the right way you should be behaving right okay and uh, i i don't think this subject is that easy as well right for uh, you to study everything a day before exam right anyhow i am i'm taking class here if you try right, try to listen something and learn here or it's why simply you people are wasting time right simply for attendance sake joining right and doing something else it's it's not going to work seriously right so from now on every after every class there will be a quiz right and if you score above a a threshold right i i'll set a threshold for each quiz right depending upon what are supposed to be learned in that particular session then only i'll give you attendance right maybe a, a quiz will have two or three questions right it will be live quiz i'll uh, conduct in quizzes right at the end of the class i'll conduct right or else in between right when i discuss some point i'll conduct if you are not giving correct answer no attendance would, is is that okay would that be okay yeah should i continue or shall we leave the class here yes shervin uh, continue sir right no this is not going to work right um this is not going to work right i'll continue yeah so we have half hour beam width that is actually what the angular separation so if you have a radiation pattern the angular separation between the half power points what do you mean by half power points is this antenna it is radiating maximum along z direction or theta equal to 0 and as you move away right as you change theta the radiation reduces and in some direction the radiation becomes actually what exactly half the maximum value right the angular separation between that that is actually half our beam width and practically what you should do is if you are using an antenna as a transmitter right you should make sure the receiver is within this half our beam width then only reliable reception will happen right otherwise it won't happen right and the concept personal beam width actually you can see when you change theta the field is reducing and at some point it is actually what in this direction there is no radiation right and similarly on the other uh, direction right uh, towards the left right if you increase theta in this direction there is no radiation there are nulls right so this is first null right and as if you move further then we have a minor lobe this is second null third null fourth null right so first null beam width is actually what beam width between the first null points or angular separation between first null points in this case it is actually what 74 degree uh, if you measure it from field pattern or power pattern it is actually what 74 degree in this particular example right and um this first null beam width right it 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 also decides about actually what resolution suppose you have 
right um a different uh, satellites right suppose you have different satellites are uh, spaced uh, at some distance in space right and you want to receive only from one particular satellite and you don't want to receive from the other satellite so you have to make sure if one satellite here is here the second second satellite should be actually what maybe uh, here after the first null right if it is within this first null what will happen uh, this particular antenna if it is acting as a receiving antenna right or if what will happen it will receive from the satellite as well as this satellite right so the resolution is actually what resolution of an antenna right that is called that is actually first null beam width by 2 we will we'll, we'll solve a problem later on right so resolution of an antenna it is equal to f and b w first null beam width by 2 so in this case first null beam width is 74 degree so the resolution is 36 degree which means this antenna can be used to differentiate or this uh, between two satellites which are spaced 36 degree apart as seen from earth right or two receivers or transmitters which are placed 36 degree apart right so if the beam is very narrow then the resolution is actually what very fine right so that is about half hour beam width and personal beam width right and uh, this is uh, so first example which i told is actually what in this case it was symmetric about main lobe axis right it was symmetric about main lobe axis now in the case of a dipole half wave dipole we have seen half wave dipole actually what it, its radiation pattern will be like this radiation pattern of half wave dipole will be like this and the antenna is kept along z axis and you can see it's not actually what symmetric we can't see any main lobe or anything here right it, it's there is only a single lobe and it's not symmetric about the z axis antenna axis right so if i take only one cut right if i take a cut along this xz plane or yz plane the pattern will look like this that is actually what e plane pattern will look like this it's a figure of 8 whereas if i cut along this xy plane right xy plane the pattern will be like this that is h plane pattern so in this is actually what the case to not symmetric about the antenna axis so if it is not symmetric about the antenna axis right we need two cuts e plane cut and h plane cut right these two together can actually what describe the 3d radiation pattern right so this is e plane pattern so you can see in e plane pattern it's actually what variation of theta right this is theta variation of field with respect to theta right for theta equal to 0 right if dipole is placed along the axis for theta equal to 0 there is no radiation as theta increases radiation increases for instance at 45 degree if you want to know what is a field or if it is b field pattern if you want to know what is the field intensity just draw a line right so the field intensity at 45 degree will be proportional to this pattern radius right and this is the maximum maximum happens for theta equal to 90 degree right and again we have a null at theta equal to 180 degree theta equal to 0 and 180 we have null right and on both sides and this is variation with respect to theta and this is variation with respect to phi so you can see with respect to phi it's symmetric with respect to phi it's um, symmetric it's it's like a circular cross section right so these two can explain the radiation pattern easily right so that that is about actually what radiation pattern so we have seen what is a radiation pattern we have seen main law right then we know what is null and we know what is side law right we know what is back law right you know what is half power beam width now these things can be um, two mark questions defined right and you know what is first null beam width right and also you know resolution the solution of an antenna is equal to actually what first null beam width by right so instead of the, the, these are the, all these are actually what polar plots right instead of going for a polar plot i can even represent it using actually what a cartesian plot right i can even represent it using a cartesian plot right so that cartesian plot which means along the x axis if i plot theta right this is theta equal to 0 and this is positive theta right and negative theta and same radiation pattern so in this case actually theta equal to 0 and as theta increases and theta becomes 90 degree it becomes actually what maximum right 
then so th i can represent it like this also right i can represent it like this also right in this case either i can plot the field as such or power or power in db mostly we'll represent as power in db so i can represent it as actually what a cartesian plot also right cartesian plot it's right i'll show an example later right so along x axis it will be theta and along y axis it's actually what either field or power or power in db or whatever right that also is possible so this particular pattern in cartesian it will look like this and the other pattern the first pattern which we have seen in cartesian it will look something like this right so it has a main lobe along theta equal to 0 and nulls right here again we can find half hour beam width first null beam width all those things it will be linear or in cartesian scale but here it is in polar scale in a polar plot right the magnitude is proportional to actually what distance of the point from origin right electric field density magnitude is proportional to what pattern radius and that is actually polar plot so each circles are actually what each circle in a polar plot so these are actually what equal radius right equal radius right okay fine that's it. that's about uh, yeah that's about uh, this a uh, pattern right now we should know what is normalized field pattern and normalized power pattern so normally normalized field pattern is nothing but what if uh, we'll represent it as e theta of theta comma so in um, i am assuming in this particular if, from now on i'll be assuming actually what electric so if there is an antenna right if there is an antenna placed right this electric field intensity it has got only theta component right magnetic field intensity has got only phi component like that so e theta of theta phi it is actually what field pattern e theta of theta phi it's a function this is field pattern so normalized field pattern is actually what dividing e theta of theta comma phi with the maximum value of that that will give you normalized field pattern normalized field pattern we'll represent it with a subscript n right that is normalized field pattern so um, if you normalize it what will happen e max will become 1 right that's it then power pattern right instead of field pattern if you plot actually what power density or pointing vector right a pointing vector is nothing but what power per unit area right we'll represent it as s theta comma phi instead of field if you are plotting power or power density as a function of theta and phi that is actually called power pattern right that is actually called power pattern right and this s theta of phi it's a pointing vector right that is given by e cross h it is actually what cross product of electric field and magnetic field intensity vectors you have studied this right pointing vector pointing theorem all those things but you don't have to be remembering everything in deep but these basic ideas you should know that's it right and this uh, you know this h is equal to what e by z not where z not is intrinsic impedance of free space i told that is equal to 120 pi ohm or 377 ohm it is nothing but what ratio of electric field vector to magnetic field vector in free space right so this is analogous to actually what v by i what is the unit of electric field intensity it is volt per meter and magnetic field intensity it is ampere per meter right so volt per meter per ampere per meter it has a dimension of volt per current and it has a dimension of z right so this e by h is z not intrinsic impedance of free space and for free space it is equal to 125 or approximately equal to 377 ohm exactly it is 376 point something right it is 377 ohm right so what we can do is e cross h right uh, e and h are at 90 degree so e h sin theta so that will become actually what e mod of e into mod of e times sin 90 is equal to 1 divided by z not so it is e s of theta comma phi is equal to e square by z not this is a uh, real instantaneous magnitude of pointing vector right that is e square by z not that right? that is power is proportional to square of field intensity right power is proportional to square of field intensity right and uh, one more later on when we solve problems and all when we deal with half average pointing vector it is actually what half or e square by 2 z not right there is a factor of half also there if it is average pointing vector so later on we'll um, uh, study that right so uh, now suppose 
right we have uh, electric field vector right it has theta and pi component it has e theta and e phi component so i can write e square as actually what e theta of theta comma phi whole square plus e phi of theta comma phi whole square so e square will become this divided by z not and the unit of pointing vector is actually what watts per meter square right power per unit area watts per meter square right and z not is intrinsic impedance of which so instead of um field intensity if you are plotting power density that is called power pattern right that is called power pattern now what will be normalized power pattern normalized power pattern will be this right s of theta comma phi n this s always will be directed along r ar cap right s of theta comma phi n is s of theta comma phi divided by s of theta comma phi maximum but right. that is normalized power pattern normalizing it that is what right so i just wanted to tell these things now what we will do is we will we'll just try to solve some uh, problem suppose right you can take down a problem right uh, and antenna has a such problems are used in uh, used to, uh, are asked in uh, university exams right an antenna has a field pattern antenna has a field pattern given by e of theta comma phi or so e of theta right it's a it's a function of only theta it's not a function of phi with respect to phi it's a constant right e of theta is equal to co square theta right e of theta is co square theta the question is find the half power beam width and first null beam width right e of theta is co square theta that is the pattern right you should find the half power beam width and first null beam width so how this cos square theta pattern will look like if you take a cross section of this right so cos theta is maximum for theta equal to 0 so cos square theta also will be maximum for theta equal to 0 right so the maximum radiation will be somewhere along this theta equal to 0 this is theta equal to plus 90 theta equal to minus 90 so in which direction we will have maximum radiation along theta equal to 0 or theta equal to 90 so we will have maximum radiation along theta equal to 0 and 180 right so this will be the pattern right cos square theta will be actually what some pattern like this if you want to visualize this uh, clearly right maybe in next class when we solve more and more problems different patterns we will visualize using geogebra right but for instance you can Uh, consider that. and what is the maximum value of this maximum value of this will be equal to 1 right so this maximum is equal to 1 so this is a normalized pattern which is given right as maximum value is 1 we can tell it is a normalized pattern right so this maximum value is equal to 1 and as you change theta this is theta equal to 180 degree right as you change theta in either direction in positive direction or negative direction what will happen you will see half power points right here as well as here you will see half power points so half hour beam width is actually what angular separation between these two points this is actually what half power beam width right that is actually half hour beam width so how to find that how to find that to find half hour beam width right so maybe i can write sorry right half hour beam width beam width is angular separation between half power point so this is a field pattern which is given half power points right so as it is a field pattern it is actually what between emax by root 2 points and here emax is 1 between 1 by root 2 or 0.707 points right so this is one and when this become 0.707 on both sides so if you change theta in positive sense it will become 0.707 say this is actually what theta p right and when you change it in negative sense it will become actually what 
uh, half uh, one by root two again. So that is theta n. So this half power beam width is actually what half power beam width will be theta p plus theta n. Right. So that's what we have to find out. So for that, what we have to do is simply equate the pattern to one by root two. So we should find theta values for which cos square theta is one by root two. That is zero point seven zero seven. Right. Cos square theta is one by root two means cos theta is root of point seven zero seven. Right. Such problems used to be asked. So instead of cos square theta, it can be something else. Right. That's it. And theta will be plus or minus cos inverse of root of point seven zero seven. Can anyone find me out what is this? Can anyone tell me what is this? Those who have calculator, please. What is the cos inverse of root of seven point seven zero seven? Please. Thirty two point seven seven. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. I, I need it in degree, right? I need it in degree. So uh, it can either be degree or radian, but uh, preferably I need now it in degree, right? So it is plus or minus. I can write approximately thirty-three degree, right? Plus or minus thirty-three degree, which means, right? I'll draw that diagram once again, right? So if this is the pattern, right? The half power points happen at plus thirty-three degree, and Minus thirty-three degree. So half power beam width is twice that thirty-three, right? So half power beam width is two into thirty-three degree. That is actually what sixty-six degree. So this angle is actually what sixty-six degree, right? That's how you'll find half power beam width. So instead of this cos square theta, it can be actually what cos theta times cos two theta. We we'll solve more problems in next class, right? Don't worry, right? So such problems then we will solve in next class. So we found half power beam width. Now to find first null beam width, what we should do? First null, you can see that from maximum when you change theta, it's and at theta equal to 90 degree, we are getting actually first null and theta equal to minus 90 degree. So first null beam width has to be equal to 180 degree. So but how you will find that? For that to find first null beam width, right? Equate cos square theta to zero. Which means theta equal to plus or minus 90 degree, and first null beam width is 2 into this is 90 degree, and this again is 90 degree. So 2 into 90 degree that is actually what 180 degree. In this particular case, it is 180 degree. Right. Cos square theta is zero, which means cos theta is zero, which means theta equal to plus or minus 90 degree. Right. So that is what is First null beam width. So similar problems you, you can you'll get. So this it's just thing. So now uh, after this problem you might have understood when I say it's a function of theta and phi. So in this particular case it was only a function of theta. It was it was symmetric with respect to phi, or it was a constant when phi was changed. So it's not a function of theta phi. Right, it's a function of theta alone. Right, in most of the cases it will be function of theta alone. In some example, right, maybe we'll see which is a function of theta and phi. Right, but otherwise. most of the cases it will be uh say function of theta alone right so that's it for today right so we have studied what is radiation pattern right and we know what is main law side laws null right then half power beam width personal beam width right then we know what is resolution now right and also uh, we have seen what is a normalized pattern right what is a power pattern right these things we have studied so in re remaining discussion right why i became angry uh, i'm really sorry i wouldn't have uh, been uh, right speaking to you people like that right? because the 
entire remaining part of this particular module depends upon your understanding of this particular radiation pattern if you don't understand that it's equivalent to what not attending the class right so that's why so please do right uh, pay attention right uh, try to learn something from here if you don't understand please ask me so i'll try to explain it in some other way or else maybe i think i should uh, share a feedback link now right maybe some people are not happy with the way i am handling the class so I i'll share a feedback link you please give me uh, your uh, feedback it will be okay saavan i'll post actually in, uh, last class video what happened is in between there was some disturbance right then i thought um i'll uh, defer i'll post it i have to do some editing and i'll post it right hmm? right so um please right it's a request take down notes listen carefully in class right um that's it right that's it from my side if you have any doubt right maybe we don't have time to take doubts now only one minute left you can yeah leave and join the other class thank you thank you so much right i'll i'll make the recordings available right and please don't feel bad right i just wanted to tell that because otherwise you will you will lose the continuity you miss the continuity right please don't get offended i even though i asked right i, I was telling the entire class right not individuals and i'll share a feedback link please do give a uh, uh, correct feedback what if, so that i can improve right that's it thank you thank you so much you can leave the uh, leave the meet